understand quest and curiosity. There is a vast difference between these two words quest and curiosity. Religion is a quest, philosophy is curiosity. Curiosity is always good, it is beautiful, but never stop at it. Let your curiosity deepen. It is a good beginning, but not the end. Because curiosity always remains lukewarm. It is an intellectual gymnastic. It is good to be curious, because that is how one starts the journey of inquiry into existence. But if one simply remains curious, then there will be no transformation, no intensity. First, there will be no intensity in it, and without the intensity, the possibility of transformation is not there. One can move from one curiosity to another. One will become driftwood from one wave to another, but he will never get anchored anywhere. He will be moving from one wave to another, and that's all. From one curiosity to another, and this process continues. Curiosity is a good beginning, but then one has to become more passionate about it. One has to make life a quest, not only a curiosity. And what do I mean when I say that one has to make one's life a quest? Curiosity is a very good beginning. It creates questions, but your life never becomes a quest. Life is not question. Life is living it intensely. Questions are many, but quest is one. When some question becomes so important to you that you are ready to sacrifice your life even for it, then it is a quest. When some question has such an importance in your life, such significance that you can gamble, that you can stake all that you have, then it becomes a quest, a deep yearning. Curiosity is good as a triggering point for some quest. But there are many people who simply remain curious their whole life. Their life is a wastage. They are like rolling stones that never gets, gathers any mass. They remain childish. They never become mature. They ask a thousand and one questions, but they are not really interested in answers. By the time you have answered them, they have prepared another question. Not only one, but many. In fact, when the master is answering the question, if the disciple is only curious one, he is already thinking about another question to ask. Before the answer is finished, another question pops up. He is not listening to the answer at all. He is not interested in the answer. Instead, he enjoys asking questions. And then your curiosity can get you hooked on to some, something utterly nonsensical. There are people who are curious as to who made the world, who made this universe. How is this going to help you? Now this is utter nonsense. Buddha said it so many times that how is it going to affect your life? How is it going to help you? It is not going to deepen your meditation. It is not going to help you become enlightened. It is not going to give you freedom. It is not going to give you light. Why are you concerned with who made the world? Whether it is A or B or C, a Christian God, a Hindu God or a Mohammedan God, or a Jewish God, how does it matter to you? Even if it is decidedly known that A made the world, what are you going to do then? How is it 
going to benefit you then you will start something else you will start asking something else that question is finished and a new question will be generated but these questions are never finished because these questions are utterly meaningless absurd so they are never finished one can go on asking and asking and asking and the whole life can become just a wastage it is good to be curious at the beginning but don't remain curious forever you will need some more passion in order to grow curiosity is not hot enough to transform your life it is superficial and shallow you have to create a longing to know truth and immense intense passion for truth because that needs courage because risk is involved people go on thinking about questions people go on thinking about questions and questions and no risk is involved in it that is their substitute for quest because to go intensely into anything needs courage risk is involved so people go on thinking about questions and that is their substitute for quest and this is the difference between philosophy and religion religion is a quest philosophy is only curiosity the philosopher is never transformed by whatsoever he finds he remains the same for example if you meet aristotle you will not find any impact of his philosophy in his life no nothing of it he is simply a philosopher a great philosopher but he is not transformed he will be as devout of his own philosophy as you are he only thinks he does not live what he thinks but if you meet the buddha then whatsoever he says he lives it he says only because he lives it he has lived it saying comes later on living comes first living precedes it make your life a quest it is good that you have come here you come to a master but don't go as you have come go with a passion a fire in your heart otherwise curiosity can be dangerous to let your curiosity be transformed here let it become a flame in your being a quest a deep yearning you have come here philosophically to know something go from here as a religious person religion is the quest for truth remember religion is the quest for truth it wants to know it and not on somebody else authority religion is knowing directly not borrowed from his scriptures religion wants to know it on one's own authority and to have that quality is one of the greatest blessings of life indeed that is the greatest blessings of life i create inquiry in you when you come not an inquiry that can ever be satisfied by anybody else even i cannot satisfy your quest i can simply add a flare to it it can make it more and more intense that you will have to discover it on your own i simply give you a thirst make you more and more thirsty one day that very thirst will take you into your innermost shrine their truth waits for you their god abides there is the resting place for you 
and until you reach that place your journey should never come to an end because you will not get any fulfillment until you discover the truth on your own on your own authority